Hi guys, this is Ms. Howington here at Research Triangle High School. Um, we are talking today about the challenges that organisms that live in estuaries face and the adaptations that they have developed over lots and lots and lots and lots of time um, to deal with those challenges. So let's go ahead and get started. So as we talked about in our um, patterns and zonation video for estuaries, um, Estuaries are also subject to changing water depth with the tides, just like the intercoastal zone is. So that means that um, areas of estuaries are exposed every day. Um, and in North Carolina, uh, that's twice a day. They're exposed like this, and they're flooded twice a day. Um, some places only have one tide a day, but North Carolina, we have two. So that presents a challenge because you either have to be able to deal with, like, if you're a plant, you have to be able to deal with, like, having your roots wet all the time. Um, or if you're an aquatic organism that, like, needs the water to feed, then you have to deal with maybe, like, not being able to eat for, like, half the day. Um, so that's definitely a challenge. Um, and then another challenge uh, with estuaries, since it's where um, <clears throat> rivers meet the sea, um, we have to deal with changing salinity levels. So we'll see if this little video will work for us. Um, <clears throat> so as you can see in this video, um, these are high salinity levels and low salinity levels. So where the river is coming into um, the estuary, there's fresher water and where the ocean is coming in there's saltier water and as the tide changes that so as the tide comes in that salt water gets pushed farther up into the estuary and as the tide goes out the fresh water can come farther down into the estuary so that changes the salinity or the salt levels um, in the estuary all the time which is also challenging because organisms um, most of the time we need to keep salt out of our um, out of our cells so that um, our cells don't like take on a whole bunch of water and flood. Um, all right. So another challenge that organisms face. Um, this is due to the the tides again. Um, is the changing depth in the water. So again, just like in the intertidal zone. Those organisms that like need um, to have the water there to feed, um, and when the water goes away, the tide goes down, then they could like dry up, or they don't have access to food, or they could get super hot or super cold. Um, so things organisms deal with that, um, like barnacles, they will attach themselves, they'll cement themselves to a hard surface and they just hold on there. And then when the tide goes out, um, they close up so and they seal up so that none of the water can escape. Um, and when the tide comes back in, they'll open up so that they can feed and um, mate and do all the things that they do when the water is up. So organisms like barnacles and oysters do this. They cement themselves there so they can't be washed away by the changing um, water level. Or organisms can move. So um, a lot of times if when you're in an intertidal zone you see these little tiny crabs uh, running up and down the shore um, and they will run away from the water. Um, they do need, the fiddler crabs, they do need water to feed. Um, they, well, they don't water. They need the wet sand to feed. Um, um, so, yeah. All right. So, um, and then adaptations to the changing salinity. We are going to switch there. Um, so, to the changing salinity. So, organisms can either be osmoconformers or osmoregulators. So osmoconformer, so osmo um, is talking about the, references the balance of um, salt and water in bloodstream. And uh, conformer means that it's just doing whatever the external environment is doing. So osmoconformers, they cannot change their internal salinity. Um, and so the blood salinity is 
just whatever it is in the water that they're in. And then some organisms are osmoregulators. This is way more energy intensive of a process. So this is their, a physiological adaptation that we're talking about here to um, change their internal salinity. So it allows them uh, to drink salt water and then they can excrete that pretty efficiently. So we have some examples of these organisms. Um, so osmoconformers are, they can tolerate a very wide range of salinity, so we'll find them all throughout the estuary. Um, so you might have like these, uh, this is a collection of lots of things, but this um, yellow looking thing is uh, called a sea squirt or a tunicate, um, and they are colonial organisms um, and they yeah, are osmoconformers. Um, and then oysters and other mussels are also osmoconformers. We find them in lots of different areas of the estuary regardless of the salinity. And then osmoregulators, um, again, is an active body process. So this is a physiological adaptation uh, that allows them to get rid of salt in their body. So they're drinking water um, and they are excreting salts. Um, so a lot of fish are osmoregulators and blue crabs are also osmoregulators. Um, and so this allows them also to be in lots of different places in the estuary. All right, guys, thanks for watching today. Um, and we'll talk more about this in class.